Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Jonas Lieserer and I'm Business Development Manager at Vector responsible for the charging controllers. Today I would like to discuss with you a little bit on the pantograph systems that do exist on the market and show you some differences between the system that you might not have known so far. First, let's have an overall look on the charging technologies that do exist on the market. Initially, there has been the conductive system, so simply having a plug and connecting this plug to, to an electrical vehicle. This EV can be either a passenger car, but it can also be a commercial vehicle like a forklift or an electric truck. They all have the aim to be charged with, through the same interfaces to keep the variance as small as possible. Furthermore, there are charging possibilities to charge through an inductive system that means contact less and it's established and some uh, customers use it already. Furthermore, there are technologies uh, that could use the EV as a power supply back to the grid. So a local storage, so to say, where you could power your house, where you give the energy back into the infrastructure whenever it is needed. This technology is called bidirectional power transfer. But today we would like to focus on the pantograph system for buses where they are mainly used. I would like to um, separate this presentation now in two chapters. The first chapter will capture the roof-mounted pantograph system. That's a system that is hosted on the vehicle and raises itself up into the infrastructure side. The second chapter will be about the inverted pantograph where the moving parts are on the infrastructure side and they are extended onto the electrical vehicle. We at Vector, we focus on the charging communication technologies in these different systems and that's also what the presentation would be about today. The roof-mounted pantograph can be used at bus stations wherever they want to be applied to depending on the route that the bus is driving but they are also used in the depots or whenever a bus comes to a longer stop to recharge the vehicle. You can see that the mechanical part goes up into the hood which is that gray block on the top that is mounted on the infrastructure side and is an, a non-movable part. Looking at the system from a communication, from a charging communication perspective, we see that the electrical vehicle supply equipment, EVSE, has the static hood up here, um, as well as the DC plus and DC minus lines, which are actually the power transfer information. Furthermore, there is a physical earth grounding both participants on the same level. And as well, there is a supply equipment communication controller connected over the control pilot to the electrical vehicle communication controller on the bottom in here. Through these pins, the actual communication is happening. How this is being done, we are going to look in the next slides. The communication protocol behind that, um, firstly, where that's where the electrical vehicle informs over the control pilot through an analog value about its own status. So that means the charging station needs to know if the vehicle is ready to be charged, if it's connected or if it's not even connected. That's being done through an analog value being transmitted over the control pilot, or also known as the control pilot voltage. But within 12 volt, or also known as zero volt, um, it is not connected while nine volt and six volt and three volt means, hey, we are connected. When we are at six volt and three volt, it, it additionally means we are ready to be charged. This information is sent from the EV to the supply equipment. Furthermore, based on the voltage, we're now we know, yes, we are connected and we are ready to be charged. We need to transmit the information about how are we being charged and what's actually the purpose of the charging. That's being done through the control pilot duty cycle. The duty cycle itself for AC charging um, is used to transmit the, the actual power that wants to be transferred. But uh, as we are DC charging, we are aiming on the five volt duty cycle as we might know from the ISO 15118 protocol, where we refer to a high-level communication, the so-called CCS communication, combined charging system. 
looking at the session that's happening, first of all, yes, we need to be connected. The, the control pilot state goes into 9 volt, which is the state B, and that means we have a start of a charging process. When we look at the pantograph, that means that the pantograph is fully elevated and connected to the hood. As soon as they are connected, the communication setup is starting. So that means we do the Slack, we do the information exchange and all the things. Maybe there is also a certificate, but that's optional. Further than the identification, authentication and authorization, as well as the target settings for the target voltage and target current take place until we actually hit the charging control in state F as seen in here. Also, rescheduling if, if charging schedules are applicable could take place in here and if used evaluated service, for example, to preheat the vehicle or, or to do some other preconditioning to the vehicle. If you are familiar with the combined charging system, this might sound really familiar to you. What's happening? The roof mounted pantograph is connected through the control pilot to the, to the infrastructure. And yes, indeed, the communication is identical between a CCS charging or a pantograph charging when we only look at the communication through the control pilot itself. There are some surroundings which are not equivalent. That means, for example, when we look at through the plug, um, the proximity pin is not evaluated and the value is not, um, is not really captured. Furthermore, the locking of the plug is not taken into consideration. So the feedback is not taken into consideration. But with the pantograph, for example, we need to know in what kind of angle is it lifted? Is it fully lifted? Is it fully on the bottom? And am I allowed to, to take off again after I'm being charged? Furthermore, the inlet has a temperature sensor, which we don't use in the, in the pantograph. But within the pantograph, we might use this temperature sensor to detect if the pins on the top of the pantograph are iced, uh, and then we need to heat them for de-icing, for example. Coming from the roof-mounted pantograph and looking into the inverted pantograph, the system itself might look really familiar to you, but we just turn it around. So that means that the moving part is now hosted on the infrastructure side, and it's being connected down onto the vehicle, which simply has rails mounted on top of it. The system itself, if we again have a look at what we've done in the roof mounted pantograph, has the DC plus and DC minus lines applied, as well as the physical earth and the control pilot. So again, we have a four pin system. But what's the major difference now in the inverted pantograph is that the communication itself happens through the Wi Fi antennas, which are connected or which connect the system between the charging station and the electrical vehicle. So the control pilot is connection now is missing actually because the information exchange is only being done through Wi-Fi. Furthermore, the system doesn't just specify, yes, there is a Wi-Fi communication, but um, the, the upcharge specification also states where exactly the Wi-Fi antenna has to sit. So it sits right above the center of the front wheel axle and in a certain distance between the middle of the vehicle to the outside. So there's an absolute fixed position for this antenna next to the charging rails being mounted on top of the vehicle, just because the Wi-Fi antenna is a directional antenna with actually no spreading of the Wi-Fi signal. So that means that a vehicle really needs to be positioned properly below the pantograph to establish this communication between the two participants. The upcharge specification also gives an example about what kind of antenna to be used. They, for example, use a Huber and Suna antenna um, with, which, with a directional antenna. Let's have a look at how the communication protocol in the upcharge specification really lowers the pantograph. And this is actually done in the state cable check that we might know from the combined charging system. The initial position when actually nothing happens is that the control pilot state, or also known as the control pilot voltage, is in the state A with zero volt, as well as the inverted pantograph is in its home position and is not extended down. So in cable check, 
The system initially sends a cable check request message out to the pantograph, and then the pantograph responds with the cable check response, saying that the EVSE status code is at reserved 8. This reserved 8 is triggered from the ISO 15118 communication protocol and is just used in the object specification to keep um, the, the complete system within the same naming, within the same message naming, within the same signal naming as we know from the conductive system. That's why reserved 8 is used as it's not relevant in the CCS. Also, the isolation status is invalid. There is no connection, so the EVSE doesn't need to take over the isolation measurement. As well as the processing is ongoing, as we see that the pantograph with the first cable check request message is already extending, but is still in the value zero volt. In the next step, at a later time, the cable check request message is again sent, as it's not yet fully, fully connected. And then the system might respond, hey, yes, I'm fully connected. Um, I'm in state B, 9 volt. So that means, again, I'm connected, but not ready to be charged. And then the EVSE can take over the isolation monitoring. So we see the response code is active. The isolation status is invalid as, it's, as the processing is still ongoing. The next message, then we confirm that the isolation status is valid and the EVSE is ready to charge the vehicle. And the processing is finished as the pantograph is fully extended down to the vehicle. This is all being done over Wi-Fi. But as you might remember in the beginning, we still have the control pilot, which is connected in the four pin uh, pantograph system. What is the actual control pilot doing? Um, yes, it is communicating about the state, the control pilot voltage, but additionally there is a duty cycle applicable. And in the opcharge specification, the duty cycle remains at 100%. That means the duty cycle is used as a kind of proximity pin to detect if the system is actually connected or if, if it's not connected. So it's a kind of fallback mechanism to allow the system to survey itself. If we compare again the upcharge specification against the roof-mounted pantograph system like we've done before, you will see that there is a slight difference between what's happening before and in between. Well, in the upcharge specification, we have the upcharge one state, which is the automatic discovery of the supply equipment communication controller. That means the device that is connected over the Wi-Fi. That means this is actually the sequence where in the conductive system or the roof-mounted pantograph system, the, the, the driver connects the cable into the vehicle or puts or presses the button to raise the pantograph. So there is automatically something happening before we even start the charging process. Furthermore, there is a fine positioning and parking of the vehicle required in the upcharge to be really aligned that we are in a center position and that the Wi-Fi antennas through their directional um, characteristics are actually working together and are properly connected. This fine positioning and parking, as soon as that is placed, the communication setup is being established. Now we are missing the certificate handling. That's why the, that's because the upcharge specification does not include the time transport layer security um, to, to exchange these critical certificates. Then we go on that we try to connect the ACD. The ACD is actually the shortcut for the automated connecting device until it is connected and it's ready to be charged. The missing transport layer security is also the fact why value-added services are not applicable within the upcharge. At the end, as soon as we are fully charged, we can disconnect the vehicle from the pantograph. The upcharge specification, uh, when we look, for example, into the vehicle fine position and parking, is slightly different to what will come up in the ISO 1511820. Might we can make a little excurs on this now. Where the fine positioning and parking um, is done through kind of lines on the road or maybe on the on the sidewalk for the upcharge, um, the ISO 1511.8-20 doesn't say anything on that. The pairing and positioning device that is also needed in the ACD use case could be a kind of camera that sees a barcode on top of the vehicle 
could be a second um, and uh, in uh, second and independent um, communication channel wirelessly between the two participants, or it could be something else uh, like an uh, RFID tag. I don't know. There are many options that can be applicable. Also, where the upcharge has a, um, a, a very strict radiation pattern for the Wi-Fi communications or directional antenna, the ISO 1511820 um, is just a single hotspot for the complete uh, uh, parking, uh, charging, charging garage. So that means um, there is only one hotspot available for all the vehicles where we have a point-to-point -point connection in the upcharge specification. Just some big differences between these two standards. Let's have a look at some other pantograph systems which also exist on the market but are not, not as popular. So for example, the first one would be the horizontal pantograph where we have a, a horizontal um, step coming from the infrastructure side into the vehicle and connect. It looks actually like a pen that is connected into the vehicle and where the inlet is around opening to, to communicate and to charge the vehicle. From a charging architecture perspective, it's similar to an inverted pantograph because the moving part is on the infrastructure side, but the system exists in two, um, two, in two scenarios. The first scenario would be the ISO 1511 charging standard, so a pure conductive system without Wi-Fi, and the second system could be also applicable through upcharge, so with a Wi-Fi system. There is also an underbody pantograph system available on the market, which is widely used. And it's actually sitting either on the vehicle and connecting down to the infrastructure, like a roof mounted pantograph, or like an inverted pantograph, it's sitting inside the, the, inside the ground and moving up into the, onto the vehicle. The second one, where it's moving up onto the vehicle, just requires a small plate underneath the EV and makes it really attractive also for passenger cars to be reused, for example, because it has a very low weight and a lot of power to be transmitted. Summing up what we've just said, um, there are many pantograph variants on the market. The most uh, known ones are the roof-mounted pantograph and the inverted pantograph system. There are also horizontal and underbody pantograph system. It's actually the community who has to decide which system they want to follow and the buses that they want to apply it with. Because it's, it can be two or three manufacturers for the EVSE side, it can be one or multiple manufacturers for the vehicle side, and they all have to be interoperable to each other. So the challenge is not only within the EVSE manufacturer, but also with the EV manufacturer to have the most standards available as possible to supply their vehicles to the most communities or cities as possible. If you would like to know more about the pantograph systems, you can also look into our technical article that is published on our website and in newspapers about pantograph charging and how the systems look like. I want to thank you very much for paying attention during this short presentation. Um, and now I'm looking forward to answer your question in the upcoming Q&A session. Thank you very much and see you soon.